tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. Tip with Tony. Tip with Tony. Tip with Tony. Hello and welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I am Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. I am so excited to record this episode because I can't even wait to tell you it is official. The Once Upon a Diet book that I've been working on for nearly two years is available on Amazon for purchase today while you're listening to this. So go to the link in the show notes. You can pause this, go get your copy and then come back. And I'm going to tell you all about why you need to buy this book and what you can expect. And also, I will be actually giving you a little sneak peek to the intro. Um, I thought it'd be cool for me to kind of read it to you and kind of get you understanding of what's going to be talked about and why you need to read it. And I'm just so excited. Well, before we even get into that, I do just want to say thank you for coming back to this platform and to this podcast and subscribing and listening and sharing and downloading and supporting in every single way that you have. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have a motive to continuously show up. You know, I've been blogging for a really long time and the podcast is something I've always wanted to be on radio and have my own show. And honestly, I feel like this podcast platform is me doing that just in a different format and in a different way. We recently surpassed 100,000 downloads. So that's also a super, a super, super big feat because that just means that 100,000 listens have occurred, which means there have been 100,000 impacts and influences and thoughts and changes into your brains and your minds. And I'm hoping that it's impacted you in a positive way and really have helped you to break up with the extreme versions of what we think about when we think of health and instead really just focus on self-care and finding balance, whatever your goals are. Um, That's the purpose of this platform. That's the purpose of this podcast. So thank you so much. I really just wanted to say that first and foremost. Second, let's get into why you need to buy Once Upon a Diet. Um, Before actually I go there, sorry, I'm jumping as I usually do. Um, I'm hoping, I'm so hoping that by the time that you go to get the, go to the link, it's also available on Kindle and audio. However, the formatting for this process, let me just tell you, self-publishing a book is a lot of work. (laughs) There's a lot of steps and everything is taking me so much longer than I intended or thought of. Um, Hopefully though, I'm recording this. This is how much I waited to record this episode because I was so badly wanted everything to come together in due time. But I'm kind of tired of waiting and I'm I'm just, you know, giving up this idea of perfection and just hoping that tomorrow when I announce the book on my Instagram and Facebook and social media, that you will also be able to download a Kindle version or an audio version. However, if you can't, tomorrow you will be able to in the future. So really right now, I'm just going back and forth with just so many formatting (laughs) things and issues, but it should be good to go and it should be available on those platforms soon. But it's definitely available for paperback. So go and get your copy. So let me, if you don't know, let me give you an idea of why I think you want, you need to read this book. So this book is for that person who is tired of losing the weight and gaining the weight. They're tired of these extremes. They're tired of jumping from diet to diet. And they're also might be tired of settling too much in relationships, you know, jumping into the first thing that presents itself, being frustrated for not working out and then finding themselves in a relationship, but not quite happy. And really, the reason why I did this is because I experienced both of those things. So growing up, I was overweight. I was insecure. Wanting to lose weight was constantly on my mind. And when I went to college to become a dietitian, you'll read more about this in this book, um, I really was just looking for answers and I just latched on to anything I was being taught in school. I just was like, let me try this. Let me try that. Let me try that. All with this background 
thought in my mind that if I do this, it'll help me lose weight. And I really wanted to be able to separate this idea that the answers were outside of ourselves, right? Trying to, if you have a sustainable weight loss goal, that's that's totally fine. That's okay. Um, the idea is we want to understand the why behind it, and we want to make sure that we're not trying to fit ourselves into a diet or a plan, and instead just learn how to work with our bodies, learn to know ourselves, and use that as a way to kind of get to where we want. Same thing when it comes to relationships. I mean, there's plenty of p- people out there in this planet and partners you could potentially be with, but I want to make sure that you're being selective and you're not just settling for the first thing, for the first person that asks you out on a date, or you just feel like, oh God, it's like you, you're tired of all the questions of every every Thanksgiving, the question topic of conversation is, what do you do for work and who, are you dating anyone, right? So I don't want you to find yourself being in a relationship just to appease what society wants you to do. Very similar to our diet culture. It's almost like if you're not actively working on trying to lose weight, you're somehow looked down on. Um, And also it depends on the body that you're in. So I talk a lot about that in the book. Um, My hope is after you read it, you're going to understand that there are many ways to be both happy and and healthy. You don't have to be healthy and sacrifice your happiness. And being happy doesn't mean that you, you know, eat whatever and now your weight's kind of all over the place and you have no control over it. But there really is a way to be both happy and healthy. And neither of them are dependent on the number on the scale or whether you're in a relationship or you're not in a relationship. Um, You know, you can be both single, happy and healthy. You can be in a relationship, both happy and healthy. You know, at the end of the day, it comes down to what do you want? What do you need? What are your values? And figuring out what's important to you. And that's kind of um, kind of the premise of this book and what you'll learn about even more. So um, I'm going to read to you the introduction because I thought that would be cool. So maybe you're like, I'm not sure if this is what I'm looking for. Um, and that's okay too. I don't want you to... to buy it and never read it. (laughs) I really, really don't want that. Actually, I like really want this book to be read and influenced and shared. And I want it to bring meaning to your life. So please don't appease me just to purchase it and leave it on the shelf. That's the last thing that I want. Right. Um, I want you, if I really want people who are really interested and motivated and are going to read it. And honestly, so even though this, it, when you guys are hearing this, it's going to be the first day or whenever, you know, more recently that it came out, um, you know, I obviously allowed my my family and very close friends to get access a little bit earlier. Also, if you were on the early bird list, you probably got a little bit of a head start. And already, like, and I know this is biased because it's my mother, <laughs> but my mom read it in like two days. She's like, that was the best thing, the quickest read. I related to so much. She said, I'm going to go back and reread um, some components and some parts just because of the science, because I did have to go into depth on the science, um, at least for one of the chapters, because I am a registered dietitian. And what I teach is based off science plus real world application. So a lot of it is my story, stories of clients, you know, realistic situations. But I did have to dive into the science a little bit. And so she was just said, like, that's the part she's going to kind of go back and reread. But I also in the very last chapter explained that this is a guide, right? The once upon a diet method is a tool for you to use to help you figure out what works best for you and it's going to take time to do that so use the book as a guide you can reread it as much as you need you can revisit chapters as much as you need Um, and I really really want you to take advantage of that so I'm not sure if this will be available as this episode goes up, but it, but I will let you guys know if you continue to come back and listen by next week's episode, hopefully it will have an update. I'm also providing free resources. So when you go through the book, you're going to notice that there's charts um, and like measuring tools and handouts and not it's not a lot of that in the book, but there's a good component of it. And so I want you to be able to utilize these services um, or these, um, I won't call them services, but uh, these resources. So soon, not yet, but soon, (laughs) if you see how I'm trying to get everything to come together, but it's just not really working. 
<laughs> you're going to go to www.tipswithtony.com slash once upon a diet and you'll be able to get access to those resources. Um, I'm also tr- in the middle of redoing our website. I'm so excited because as you guys know, we recently had two dietitians come on board, Mary Rose and Casey. They're incredible. And so now when you go to apply, it used to be working with me and that whole entire application process was you know, all about what that would look like. It's the same model. The six months to food freedom coaching program is the same model in the sense that you're getting one to one coaching. They're just using my methods. They're they're using kind of the framework of once upon a diet. Um, They're using everything that I normally implement. Really, our job is to just help you to become more mindful eaters. And we, at the same time, will take that mindful mindful eating, but we'll also educate you on the things that you need to do for you based off of your individual wants and needs and bring those together. And that's how you find balance in your eating habits, right? So um, I know I went a little bit on a tangent, but when you go to www.tipsatoni.com slash once upon a diet, you'll get those resources, but you also might you know, be able to find throughout my website some really cool new things because those are getting updated as well so feel free to go check that out all right so anyways hopefully you're ready to listen to this intro um the other reason why it took me so long to record the audiobook by the way and why that's a little bit longer it's taking a little bit longer for me to kind of get out is because i don't know if you guys can hear but i certainly can um, there is construction going outside my building Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it is very loud. Like when I say it's literally right outside my building and they're building a brand new building, it's drilling, it's hammering, it is pounding, pounding. So I'm in my closet because my office, it's it's too noisy and it's too much of an echo. So my closet actually is like the best place for me to record because of sound, but I can still hear it right now. And so I'm not sure if you can hear it or not, but I didn't want to take a chance on that for recording the audio. So the audio book, I would have to wait until after five o'clock at night to record or like a Sunday, but Sundays I like, like to just like decompress. Right. And then like after a full day of work, I'm tired. <laughs> like I'm exhausted. You know, I'm not really useful after 5 PM. Um, so it was like really, really a long process, but I did it. Um, so hopefully, um, it, it was worth, it's worth the wait for you guys. But in the meantime, you don't have to wait to, for you to hear me record right now. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to just do it live. Um, the intro to my book. So fair warning. It can get a little bit sad. Um, but obviously, as you guys know where I am and where my clients are now, if you've ever, you know, followed someone who's graduated, there's just like so many beautiful, positive things that have come from those dark places. So stay tuned. (laughs) Okay. All right. So here we go. Introduction. I was in elementary school when I first realized I was supposed to hate my body. I'm not sure what exactly made it click. It could have been the teen people magazine covers I saw with articles, titles like how to get bikini ready or the then new trend of obsessing and speculating about the growing celebrity romance between Brittany and Justin or my countless viewings of the movie Grease. The main message seemed to be, change everything about yourself for a person you don't know that well. The messages coming my way certainly contributed, but the overt social programming was only half of the issue. There was also the direct feedback I was receiving from the people around me. At school, I was already being teased about my weight. Unfortunately, my home life offered little to no refuge. At family dinners, my father gave me stern looks when I filled my plate with too much food, his disapproval evident in the narrowing of his eyes and the soft shake of his head. My grandmother was less subtle, puffing her cheeks out to make herself look quote-unquote fat any time I reached for a second helping. Slowly, I began to feel like my body should be like what I saw in magazines. But it wasn't, and it still isn't. It's my own. I know that now, But between the teasing at school, the criticism at home, and everything the world was showing me from every direction, nine-year-old me had no shot at accepting herself. My story is not unique. Aspects are fairly specific to my path, but my mindset and perspective are pretty common aspects of the experience of being a young woman growing up in Western culture, especially in America. It's been this way for a long time, and while it's getting better at least in that we're more aware of it now, 
We still hear stories about people making choices to quote unquote improve their bodies with outrageous, outrageous diets and unrealistic exercise plans. My thirst for answers ultimately led to my decision to go to school to study nutrition. I remember thinking, this is perfect. I'll learn how to lose weight, get the body I want, and be in the ideal environment to find a husband. That wasn't the healthiest of decision making looking back. Fast forward years later, I finished college, and although I didn't find a husband, which we'll get to later, I certainly found my calling. I became the registered dietitian I always wanted to be, and for the past eight years, I've been helping people create and follow nutrition plans, which lead them to healthier, happier lives. I didn't know it then, but in retrospect, it's obvious my personal nutrition pitfalls were correlated with my, di- with my dating life. And after working with thousands of clients, I noticed I wasn't alone. It was a pattern. Just as my clients would jump from diet to diet, hoping each one would be quote unquote the one, I would jump from relationship to relationship, hoping for the same thing. But we never questioned if that diet or person was truly good for us or was what we needed at the time. And we'd repeat this over and over again, never taking the time to assess how to produce a different outcome. Failing to realize the diet we were following was basically the same diet, just in a different book, or the guy we were dating was basically the same guy from our past, just with a different name and face. My goal is to help you see the patterns too. It's not to protect you from heartbreak or disappointment. We need those feelings to tell us what we care about most. And without hurt, anger, and frustration, we can't really understand the type of life we want to live. Instead, I will teach you how to use these experiences as feedback so you can create the diet of your dreams and break any restrictive cycles preventing your personal growth. By the end of this book, I also want to to detach two ideas for you. Separate your body and yourself. First, your assessment of your body is different from your assessment of yourself. In an ideal world, I want to help you love everything about your body, every curve, every muscle, every bump, every cellulite dimple, every little scar or stretch mark or so-called imperfection. It's what makes you you. I know that type of attitude adjustment is a lifelong pursuit. I suspect none of us ever really truly finished the process. So while I want you to love your body, My job here isn't to convince you to adore every piece of it immediately. My role is to help you stop thinking your body is the entirety of what you have to offer the world. Your body is the least interesting thing about you. With that said, what we do to nourish and protect our bodies can help us feel good and can also turn into an opportunity to change the way we look at ourselves. I want you to love yourself even on days you're not totally in love with every part of your body. And I know we can accomplish that in this book. Separate your body and its impact on your love life. Second, I want to help you divorce the association between your body and the imaginary worthiness it supposedly grants and your perception of how it affects your suitability as a romantic partner. As evidenced in my own story, which we'll explore throughout the next several chapters, We've been culturally conditioned to draw parallels between dieting and dating, between our physical bodies and our romantic prospects. That thought process needs to go immediately. I know it's not as simple as saying, okay, I love my body now. I'm ready to find someone who loves me for me and expecting just thinking it into existence will change everything. I'm well aware of the realities of dating, conditioned attraction, and all the various things that go into romance and courtship. Finding someone you love and who loves you isn't about your body, but we can acknowledge your body may be a factor in setting the stage for that character to enter the story of your life. One of our goals here is to lessen it as a factor, and our main goal is to help you realize you don't need to have a smaller body to make it a smaller issue in your mind. You need to break the association between the two. While we treat dieting the same way we treat dating, we must stop associating, relating, and melding the two. Throughout the rest of this book, and hopefully beyond, I'm going to give you the tools to do that. When you start to use the tools I give you to change your body, you'll realize you want to change your body because you love it, not because you hate it. And you'll be making these changes for you. These adjustments will be long-lasting because you will have separated your body and your relationships. 
We'll explore all the ways you can break the paradigms and patterns created and cultivated by Western society to determine exactly how you can address and modify your nutritional program in a way that's just right for you and the body you want. Throughout this exploration, we'll also address a number of ways those same habits and behaviors may show up in the way you approach relationships. Our examination, along with the outline I'll give you, will help you shift many of those behaviors moving away from the mindset that you need to be in a relationship or in a pursuit of a relationship to be happy. Above all, you'll disassociate the belief your ideal partner is just on the other side of getting your ideal body. I want to help you change all these things because at any size, at any time, and regardless of your relationship status, you deserve to be happy. You have taken the steps to read my book, which indicates you care about yourself, even if it's just a small part. It's an important step. Deciding you deserve to make life choices that will help you now and in the future is the best investment you'll ever make. The irony of all of this is these practices, which are designed to help you find your perfect nutrition plan, may just be the thing that leads you, whether directly or at least indirectly, to your perfect partner. Wow. Okay, guys, that is the introduction of the book. So if you love that, please go and get your copy. www.tipsatoni.com slash once upon a diet is where you can get the free resources that are in along with the book. But Amazon is where you are going to get your paperback. So go to the show notes or just type in once upon a diet. Hopefully the audio and the Kindle version will be ready when you go for that search. Um, But if not, stay tuned and you will get announcement from me when it is. Make sure you're on Instagram um, and you're following me on Instagram at tips underscore with underscore Tony with an I. Those are usually where I make my bigger announcements. Um, If you're not in the Healthy Lifestyle Support Group on Facebook, definitely join that because that is going to be growing, I suspect, with the release of this book. Um, It's been really dynamic and great to see everybody's participation there. So I'm excited to kind of help to continue to see that prosper and grow. Um, and then if you're not on my email list, that also too, with the new website, it'll be so much easier for you to kind of navigate that and subscribe to the list. But in the meantime, I would say probably the best place to kind of hear announcements first would be Instagram following me at tips underscore with underscore Tony with an I. And if you get your book, oh my God, it's the most important part. When you get your book, if you please don't mind. I really want this book to get into as many hands as possible. If you could screenshot that you got the book and tag me on Instagram using the hashtag once upon a diet, that would mean the absolute world to me. And then one more further step, once you finish reading it or at least start it and you're already feeling like you got value out of it, please leave a review on Amazon. That is going to help me to get it more people to see it very similar to when you subscribe and leave a review for the podcast it helps the word get out there so i would really really appreciate if you can share it on your story tag me hashtag once upon a diet and also write a review on amazon it would mean the absolute world to me thank you so much for listening thank you so much for your continued support i absolutely love you guys and i'm so excited for where tips with tony is about to go because i really truly believe this is only the beginning i'm so grateful for you thank you so much for listening as always this is tony marinucci your registered dietitian helping you get healthy one bite at a time 